Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Einstein Periodization. I'm here with my training partner, Charlie, and we are gonna demonstrate the one arm dumbbell row, how to do it wrong, how to do it right. Remember the one arm row is to target the middle and upper back. That means the mid traps, the rhomboids, the teres major, and of course the lats, but the lats are not necessarily the number one target of this exercise. So we're gonna keep that in mind. Let's get to our first mistake and how to correct it. All right, folks, the first mistake in the one arm row is keeping the scapula locked in and not getting a super deep stretch at the bottom by letting it protract. That is damn near the whole point of this exercise. If you want your scaps to be more locked in, you can do machine rows, you can do barbell rows, and everything in between. Here we want the scapulae to protract and retract because that, especially how they're gonna get all the muscles around them really, really, really jacked. So the mistake here is to over strict the exercise, right? And you end up, yeah, you're sort of doing rows, and this isn't terrible, but what you're really missing out on, notice his scapulae are not going anywhere. What he can do better is go for a deep stretch and come all the way up, deep stretch perfect and all the way up. That really allows all of the muscles of the back to be engaged, doing a great job to stimulate hypertrophy. The next mistake is to not have a standardized range of motion by not touching something on your body at the top to signify that you've done a good job. Because, Charlie, go ahead and start one arm rowing. If you don't touch your shoulder, what ends up happening is maybe you did a rep and then, Charlie, start to kind of lose some distance at the top, right? That's where this exercise gets hard. At what point do you pronounce failure? You have no idea. So you're not really sure if you're doing a good job and you can't standardize over the weeks and over the mesocycles to see if you're getting stronger. So if we can't have a standard range of motion by touching something on our body on the way up, and of course the deep stretch at the bottom, it's really hard to track, program overloads, so on and so forth. So we're gonna solve this problem by touching the dumbbell somewhere on our body. There are two fundamental choices, anything in between is cool. So Charlie, go ahead and show us where the chest touch. This is easier to do with bigger dumbbells, so if you're more jacked like Charlie, your dumbbells are probably bigger. What he's gonna do is every single time, touch right at the bottom of his chest. Notice he actually touches his skin to know that it is a completed repetition, and then he goes all the way down. Alternatively, this targets the rhomboids and middle traps a bit more. If you wanna target the lats more, you can touch all the way back in your hip. So he's gonna to touch the dumbbell to his hip and come back, touch the dumbbell to his hip and come back. That targets the lats more. There are no right answers here. Just make sure you touch the same spot for multiple months in a row to get stronger at that exercise, and then you can switch it up. If you rotate your torso into the dumbbell as you pull it up, and away from the dumbbell as you go lower, you actually lower the range of motion you're using with your muscles, but you get to complete the motion, which rips you off. Charlie, go ahead and show us what that looks like. We're trying to get this earlier outside of tape, and it's actually really hard to do. You've seen people do this before. They'll tilt into the dumbbell and away at the top, and it looks like they're doing something pseudo-athletic. It turns out they're actually reducing range of motion. The best prescription here is to keep the torso exactly in line. Nothing is gonna move in the spine big stretch at the bottom, and he's gonna come all the way up so that he's not cheating himself. Notice how much longer this range of motion is and how much he has movement in his scapula, which is really the target. The centric phase lengthening contractions on the way down are very hypertrophic. They're part of the puzzle. You don't wanna rip yourself off by dropping the dumbbell really fast and then putting on the pressure to pull it. You want to slowly lower it anywhere between sort of one and five seconds if you really want. It depends on how you like to do it. Something like a two second eccentric is probably best for most cases, but feel free to vary. At the end of the day, control the weight. So what you don't wanna do is this, especially when the weight gets heavy, it's tempting to put on the juice on the way up and then let it drop on the bottom. Yeah, there's some injury risk, but really you're just ripping yourself off because you're not letting your muscles work under tension with the stretch. However, the right way to do it is to come up and then to milk it on the way down and come up. And notice he's not doing like five seconds or some crazy stuff, but his back is working on both phases of movement, getting him ultimate results. Folks, remember, in order to do the one arm dumbbell row correctly, you need three things. A weight you can't actually lift, and for most of the tension to come from your hips and from that opposite arm. Charlie, hit it. Show us what that shit looks like. Yeah, baby, get it. That head bob means that biomechanistically, he's targeting serendipitous hyper, what the fuck am I saying? Folks, don't do that kind of crap 
What you want to do is stay very stable, control the eccentric, big stretch, touch at the top, no swinging, no BS. You cannot cheat hypertrophy. It's impossible because the tension to the muscle is the only thing that matters. And the way you get that is with strict technique. You can write in whatever kind of reps. I did 20 reps with the 200s. Bullshit. Your muscles don't believe you. Pick a realistic weight you can do and do it correct like Charlie's about to show. No bullshit movement in that arm. No hip swing. He's going to be controlling it the entire time. Good news is you don't have to roll out the 150s. Bad news. No one's going to be impressed with the arm rows. Further good news, no one's ever impressed with their arm rows. It doesn't matter. People are super impressed with huge backs. That's how kings inherit kingdoms. They used to compare people's ba backs and the king with the, you guys know what I'm saying. King Ronnie Coleman has the biggest back ever. If you want a back like him, don't swing around too much. Stay strict, stay safe, do the right thing, and don't let your ego get ahead of your muscles. Next mistake is going too heavy or too light on one arm rows. The cool thing about one arm rows is there's really no such thing as too heavy. A lot of times that super deep, powerful stretch in sets of five to 10 reps, as long as they're strict, is really what you need. And a lot of times because you're supported on a bench, the erector spinae muscles are not limiting you anymore. And it's even better than barbell bent rows for doing ultra heavy weights, totally fine. You can go up all the way to 30 rep sets, anywhere from 20 to 30, that's totally cool. The thing is, machines that are bilateral with a chest support usually do that a little bit better. So I would save the machines for that. Fundamentally, any rep range is good for this exercise. Five to 10 is probably really good. 10 to 15 is really awesome range. I personally like for this. 15 to 20 is totally fine. 20 to 30 is technically okay, but you might want to save that for other machines and other exercises. One arm rows can be an exercise you get to use a lot of weight in because you're in such a powerful position and you get to preload with that eccentric and everything, right? You don't want your grip to limit you. This is huge. How do you make sure your grip's not limiting? We have three solutions for it. One, get some chalk on your hands. That's a really good start. At some point you might get so strong that that still has your grip limiting you and you can't really pull as hard as you want or get as many reps as you want. Straps are really, really awesome. You can cinch them in super tight, wrap your hand around, and then you're good to go. Of course, the best invention of all time. It's like number two is the computer, number three is a space satellite, number one is the VersaGrip. Folks, VersaGrips, buy them and try them. Renaissance periodization, nor myself of any contractor, any exclusivity with VersaGrips at all. I make no money from this. They're just that good. Get VersaGrips, wrap them around, and it's gonna be all back and nothing else. Lastly, big mistake is to essentially think there's one perfect technique for one arm rows, not making the individual adjustments to feel the muscles the most. For example, you can do one arm rows in the traditional fashion where you go all the way down for the stretch and you come sort of mid range and sort of touch your ribs. That's cool too. What's also totally fine is if you come up all the way up here in front, it hits different muscles, a bit more upper back than lower. There are no right answers here. You can also come sort of lawnmower style and hit your hips, totally fine. If you feel it better, you can actually take a more upright posture and as long as you're fundamentally doing the movement fine, that's totally cool. You can even set this bench up if you want on a decline, careful with your balance, and you end up actually tilted forward like this, you get a baller stretch here and you can super pull and target the lower lats a little bit more. You can even do this. You can prop yourself up like this on your knee or here, this is probably a good idea, and do unsupported one arm rows and sometimes that feels the best. Do whatever you feel produces the most stretch and the most tension in where you want to feel it in your back. And as long as it's cool for your joints, there are no wrong answers. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have questions or suggestions for another video that we can do, shoot them in the comments. If you can answer some questions that folks have, if you know what you're talking about a little bit more, please help everyone else. Thank you. Uh, send this video to friends you think are what I'm rowing wrong with a polite message and uh, like, subscribe and all that other stuff. See you next time for the next technique video.